You know all this buzz about the future, like how we'll power our gadgets, make things disappear, and how everything will be connected. Yeah. Well, get this. It all kind of boils down to this thing, this mm. uh, electromagnetic absorption. Mm. And that's exactly what we're diving deep into today. We're looking at this super cool paper from Nature Communications. And trust me, this isn't just like some incremental update. It's like, whoa, a total game changer, the kind of stuff that makes you rethink like everything. Yeah, it's really something. But first things first, what are these electromagnetic absorbers anyway? So basically imagine like a super high-tech sponge. Okay. But instead of soaking up water, it captures waves and energy. And not just one type either. We're talking light, mm -hmm. radio waves, the whole shebang. Right across the spectrum. Exactly. And yeah. You get this this new research. What they've done is they figured out how to make these absorbers thinner and more efficient than we ever thought possible. It's really pushing the theoretical limits. Like for the longest time, we thought there was this hard limit on how thin you could make these things before they just stopped working. Oh, wow. So they're kind of breaking the rules of physics here. Kind of. Yeah. It's like, hold my electrons. Watch this. I love that. <laughs> OK, I'm definitely intrigued. But before we get lost in all the technical jargon, can we just like take a step back and talk about why this even matters? I mean, why should anyone care about these super sponges? Right. Well, for starters, imagine a world where your smartwatch just charges itself. Oh, yeah. Just by being near you, oh. constantly drawing energy from the environment, like no more plugging in, no more bulky batteries. That would be amazing. Right. And then there's the whole stealth thing. Oh, yeah, the invisibility stuff. It's not just about making fighter jets invisible to radar, although that's definitely a part of it. But imagine drones that can monitor, like, sensitive ecosystems or, like, navigate disaster zones without disturbing the environment they're trying to protect. Yeah, like ghost drones. Exactly. And perhaps most importantly, this could be the key to communication networks that are just, like, mind-blowingly fast and reliable. Oh, yeah. You know, like, fewer drop calls, seamless streaming, that kind of stuff. A truly interconnected world, it's a huge deal. Yeah, it shows how a breakthrough in, you know, fundamental science can really ripple outwards and impact so many different parts of our lives. Absolutely. But you mentioned earlier, there's been this theoretical limit holding us back. Yeah. The article calls this new tech a record high bandwidth to thickness ratio. Can you yeah. like, unpack that for us? What does that even mean in plain English? Okay, so think of it this way. You know those big, thick sponges you use to clean up spills? Yeah. They hold a lot, but they're bulky. What this research has done is create the equivalent of a super thin sponge that can hold the same amount of liquid. Whoa. Or in this case, electromagnetic waves. That's crazy. It's a total game changer in terms of efficiency. So thinner absorbers that are just as effective, that's pretty amazing. But here's what really blew my mind. The researchers didn't just theorize about this. They actually built and tested this new absorber. It's not just science fiction, it's real. It is. So I got to ask, what are you most excited about when you think about the possibilities this opens up? Like, what's on the horizon? Okay, well, if we go back to those applications you mentioned, the potential impact on energy is just massive. Imagine solar panels, so thin and flexible, they can be integrated into clothing, constantly charging your devices, oh. or tiny sensors powered by the, you know, ambient radio waves that are already all around us. That's a future I'd love to see. That sounds amazing. Yeah. And the stealth applications are equally fascinating, not just for, you know, the military, mm. but for things like environmental monitoring or search and rescue missions in like really challenging environments. The ability to gather information or provide aid without being detected opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Yeah, I can see that. And of course, the implications for communication networks are huge. We're talking about the potential for ultra fast, super reliable networks that can handle, you know, the ever growing number of connected devices. Think smart cities, autonomous vehicles, a truly interconnected world. It all sounds incredible, yeah. but I know there are always two sides to every coin. Are there any potential downsides or challenges we need to consider with this level of efficiency and control over electromagnetic waves? That's a really important point and one we'll be discussing further. You know, as with any powerful technology, there are questions to be asked about its responsible development and deployment. Okay, well now I'm even more curious to dig into those questions. But first, let's take a closer look at how this breakthrough absorber actually works. What makes it so different from the absorbers we've had before? One of the key things here is something called a uh, 
highly dispersive matching network. Okay. Now that might sound kind of complicated, but it's essentially a way to manipulate the electromagnetic properties of the absorber, making it much more efficient at capturing a wider range of frequencies. So instead of just absorbing a narrow band of frequencies, this new absorber can capture a much broader spectrum. Exactly. It's like tuning a radio to receive a wider range of stations. Only in this case, we're talking about capturing electromagnetic waves across a much brighter spectrum. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So how do they actually build this thing? What kind of materials are we talking about here? Like, am I picturing scientists in lab coats working with lasers and robots or? <laughs> You're not far off. Okay. In the next part of our deep dive, we'll explore the fascinating world of metamaterials and how they're being used to push the boundaries of what's possible in electromagnetic absorption. Sounds good. I'm ready to get into the nitty gritty details. So metamaterials, these aren't like your everyday substances, you know? Okay. They're engineered, carefully designed at like a microscopic level to have properties we just don't see in nature. Hmm. Engineered materials, that sounds pretty futuristic. How does that even work? Are we talking about like nanobots or something? Not quite nanobots, but it's getting there. Imagine like building blocks, but way smaller than the wavelength of light, even smaller than radio waves. Wow. Now arrange those blocks in super precise patterns. By controlling that arrangement, you can actually program the material to interact with electromagnetic waves in very specific ways. So it's not just the material itself, but the structure, how it's all put together that gives it these special abilities. You got it. It's like um, building with Legos. Okay. Same bricks, yeah. different things you can make, right? You yeah. can build a house, a spaceship, whatever. It all depends on how you put those pieces together. Okay, so like Legos for light and other ways. Exactly. And that's what's so cool about metamaterials. It's like ultimate design flexibility. You change the size, the shape, the arrangement of those tiny building blocks, and boom, you change how it interacts with waves. So they're basically customizing the material to absorb very specific frequencies. Like, could they create a metamaterial that only absorbs radar, but say, let cell phone signals pass right through? Totally. That's what makes metamaterials so promising. That level of control, you can target a specific frequency or like a whole range, whatever you need. This is wild. So we've gone from sponges to Legos. So what did they actually use to build this metamaterial absorber? Like, what are these building blocks made of? In this study, they used a mix of metals and uh, what we call dielectrics. Metals are great conductors of electricity, and dielectrics are insulators. Right, okay. And by layering and patterning these materials in a very specific way, they created those uh, highly dispersive matching networks we talked about before. Okay, remind me again, what are those networks DO? I'm picturing like some kind of microscopic circuitry or something? Think of them like tiny little antennas <laughs> capturing that electromagnetic energy and funneling it into the material where it gets absorbed. And because they designed the network just right, they maximize that bandwidth to thickness ratio. Okay. Which means you get a thin absorber that can capture a super wide range of frequencies. That's what makes it so special. Okay, so we've got these tiny antennas made from metals and insulators arranged in a super precise way. Got it. But did it actually work? It's one thing to build it in a lab, but like, does it live up to the hype in the real world? The results were amazing, actually. They showed over 90% absorption across a wide band of frequencies, all in this super thin layer of material. Wow, 90%. That's incredible. So this isn't just theoretical. It's a real tested breakthrough. Part of me wants to jump ahead and start talking about invisibility cloaks. But realistically, what are the next T steps? How do we go from a cool lab experiment to something we might actually use? That's the big question. And while a true invisibility cloak might still be a ways off, this research is a huge step towards that. The challenge now is figuring out how to scale up production and integrate these metamaterial absorbers into real devices and systems. It's one thing to make a small sample in a lab, but mass production is a whole other ballgame. Exactly. There are hurdles to overcome. We need to figure out how to manufacture these complex metamaterials cost-effectively and make sure they're durable enough to withstand real-world conditions. So we've got energy harvesting, stealth tech, better communication networks. But are there any other areas where this could have a big impact? What else is on the horizon? Oh, tons. Think about medical imaging, for example. These absorbers could be used to create incredibly sensitive sensors that could detect tiny signals within the body which could lead to earlier and more accurate diagnoses. Mm, that's interesting. I remember reading something about 
researchers using metamaterials to like manipulate light, mm -hmm. which could revolutionize things like microscopy and other imaging techniques. You're right. That's a whole other area with tons of potential. And then there's space exploration. Oh, wow. Metamaterial absorbers could be used to make lighter, more efficient shielding for spacecraft protecting them from radiation and extreme temperatures. So from the devices we use every day to the frontiers of space, this technology could be a real game changer. For sure. But before we wrap up this part of our deep dive, mm -hmm. I do want to touch on something we mentioned earlier, the economics of it all. How could this technology impact industries, businesses, even the global economy. That's where things get really interesting. And that's where we'll pick up in part three of our deep dive. Get ready to explore the potential economic ripples of this breakthrough in ultra-thin absorbers. Oh, okay. So we're back and we've been talking about these uh, incredible ultra-thin absorbers, right? From yeah. metamaterials to like all the potential uses. It's been a lot. It has. But now let's talk money. Okay. How could this tech, you know, shake things up in different industries? Could it even change, like, the whole global economy? Well, it's not so much I if it'll change things, but how M-U-C-H, you know? Yeah. I think the economic impact is going to be huge, touching, like, almost every sector. Hmm. Energy, manufacturing, healthcare, defense, right, like a domino right. effect, and we're just seeing the first few fall. So where do you see the biggest changes happening first? Energy, for sure. Right. Just imagine solar panels so cheap and efficient. They're everywhere. Yeah. Buildings, cars, maybe even woven into your clothes. That's crazy. It's a huge shift away from fossil fuels, a real energy revolution. And don't forget energy harvesting. Yeah. Devices that just power themselves. That's like straight out of sci-fi. Totally. No more batteries. That's that's huge. Huge for the environment, huge for the economy. So cheaper, cleaner energy, no more batteries. What else? Where else could we see big changes? Manufacturing is another big one. How so? Think about it. Lighter, more efficient materials for everything. Planes, phones, even packaging. Oh. So lower production costs, less fuel, smaller environmental footprint. It's a win-win-win. Absolutely. And of course, we have to talk about communication. Mm -hmm. Faster, more reliable networks thanks to these absorbers. Right. That's got to be a big deal for the economy too, right? For sure. It opens up all sorts of things like e-commerce, telemedicine, all that Internet of Things stuff. Exactly. It's all connected. Uh -huh. Literally. Uh-huh. Yep. But what about like defense? Oh, that's a big one. Stealth tech using these absorbers could really shake things up globally. Really? Yeah. New markets, maybe a new arms race. Who knows? Wow. So we're talking potential for big changes in energy, manufacturing, communication, defense. It's a lot. Yeah, it is. It's exciting, but kind of scary, too, you know? I get it. It's a double-edged sword, big opportunities, but we got to be smart about it. So what are the risks? Like, what could go wrong? Well, one thing is jobs. Jobs. Yeah, as automation increases because of these technologies, some people might lose their jobs. That makes sense. It's happened before with new tech, so we got to be ready for it this time. So it's not just about the tech itself. It's how we adapt as a society. Exactly. Are there other potential problems we should watch out for? Well, economic inequality could get worse. How so? If the benefits of this technology aren't shared fairly, the gap between the rich and the poor could get even bigger. Right, so it's about making sure everyone benefits, not just a few lucky people. Exactly. It's a social and ethical issue, not just a tech one. I agree. It's about shaping the future we want to see, not letting the technology decide for us. That's a great point. And that takes planning, you know? Responsible innovation and real cooperation between governments, businesses, and scientists. We've covered so much today. I think we've all learned a lot about this amazing technology. I think so, too. And how it can really change everything. As always, we encourage you to keep learning. We've put links to more info in the show notes so you can explore this world of ultra-thin absorbers and all that metamaterial stuff. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll see you next time for another adventure into the future.